Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. And we're going to go over the gear sets in this specific video. They're going to come to the game, Ascending Tides, Update 33, March 14th on PC. There is a lot of new gear sets. So we have two new dungeons, which means light, medium, heavy gear sets and monster helms. We have three new PvP sets from Rewards of the Worthy that you can get earning AP. And then we have three new monster helms in Imperial City that you can get by killing the bosses in Telvar. In this video, me and my friend John test them out, theorycraft, give our opinions, pros and cons. Just keep in mind, this is on the public test server and this is subject to change. But here's a sneak peek of what we found. Timestamps are below if you wish to skip ahead. And we recorded this live on twitch.tv slash Gaming. So I highly advise coming over there, chatting, interacting with us. Thanks for watching. Testing the gear sets, Coral Airy Dungeon sets. We're going to go light, medium, heavy, and then do the Monster Helm. First set up is Maliga, 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 Maliga. Uh, five piece. So, got max health, healing done, weapon and spell damage, four piece. The five piece is the overheal set. This is kind of weird. An overheal yourself or a group member with a direct heal applies this whatever maelstrom to target for six seconds that deals shock damage to enemies within seven meters. This damage is based on 33% of the overheal up to 3300 with a 10 second cooldown. Just reading this looks very bizarre. Why you would use this, I have no idea. So my gear sets I'm running, I'm just running a one piece magma, a one piece blood spawn, the body of the set we're testing, and then a Julianos on the front bar and then Iron's blood on the back, which is just gonna give me max health. So there should be no visual proc, nothing like that. So it says a direct heal. Okay, so it spawned on me. That's a gorgeous visual effect for a total Garbo set. So the damage is based on 33% of the overheal. Okay, so I need a burst heal, you're saying, to really ramp it up to 3,300. Okay, let's hit that. So big burst heal. So yeah, it's still 2,700 is what the damage is doing on the outside. It has a big massive range though, and it looks like it can proc the status effect with the shock damage. Um, I mean, I guess that's a way to add extra damage to the tank. It does proc off of combat prayer. So I'm not at the cap by any means. I got 2,800. The cap of the damage is uh, 3,300. Okay, so I hit that. 2,800 still, even with the ritual. What do we think about this? Like for me, my thoughts are, I would not use this in PVE, why? Yeah, I can do a little bit of damage, but I don't get to control necessarily who gets it. So if I'm using a direct heal, it doesn't always necessarily go to the target that I want. Why would you use this over spell power cure? Why Why in the world would you use it over spell character? There's no reason. The heart and PVP, it's going to hit like a noodle. Yeah. All right. So trash set moving on. Oh, now the good one. The Griffin set. The thing that stuck out to me on this specific set is the tool tip. When you look at it, the bleed is 27,000 on buff over 10 seconds. So a lot of crit chance here when you deal crit damage basically activates this synergy and it causes this griffin to fly really loud sound effect it puts this insane heart hitting dot on the enemies within five meters and this, this synergy can be applied once every 20 seconds and it scales off of uh, weapon and spell damage so if i look at the tooltip of that that is literally twenty-seven thousand. now the strength of this set is you can get an automatic crit Anytime you want with the 2H, always critically strikes. The difference in Unleashed Terror is that it has the hemorrhage status effect and has much less cooldown on it. So Unleashed Terror is, is, is well less than half <laughs> of this one. If we look at Plague Break, and yes, it's blue quality, so it's not 100% accurate. This one is 9,700 and 4,000. So at gold quality, obviously these both would be a little bit higher, but that's almost triple the tooltip. Now, the cooldown is the big important fact, but this thing is nasty. Okay, so bang, hit you. Hit the griffin. And see, it's not hitting you very hard. How much resistance do you have? You got tons. Yeah, 27,000, but that's a heck of a dot. Let me hit you for a jabs quick. So yeah, you have a, a gazillion resistances. My jab's not even going over 1,100 on you. So while that doesn't look that much, this is way outperforming Unleashed Terror. So we're going to do the griffin set again. Now, the difference is I have the monster helm on. So John has a ton of resistances, so it's not hitting that hard, but in comparison to Unleashed Terror. So let's see what it hits for. I'm gonna go get out of combat. So the Griffin set averaged 700 DPS against a player with 31,000 resistances, and the average strike was about 1,400. If we go to Unleashed Terror, 
which is what I normally run, at 249. Now you do have to factor in the hemorrhage status effect, which is really, really powerful because it uh, does minor mango, reducing the uh, health of the opponent. Let's look at the average damage. 598 versus average 1400. Now, we have to factor in, though, the cooldown. So if we go to the Griffin set, the Griffin set can only be activated every 20 seconds, and it has a synergy with it. The synergy has a nice strength to it because we go to the Undaunted. The Undaunted command here, activating this when it's maxed out, gives you back resources. So every 20 seconds charging in, smashing that, or your friend can do it as well, is going to be a nasty, nasty dot. Imagine this in Battlegrounds. You throw Caltrops, you do a Stampede in, you hit that Synergy, <laughs> melted like butter. What do we think about this in PvE context? Anything? You're not really going to use this in PvE. PvP, really strong. So the pros are, hits hard, has a Synergy. The cons are the long duration. PvE, I couldn't see it being used that much. It does really hard da hitting damage. The dot damage, the tooltip is quite impressive with it, but there's just too many things. You can dodge it. The synergy is really small. It can't be reliably kept up 100% of the time unless you have this Nazari set. I would much rather use Plague Break, Savaria Scale, Unleash Terror. So this one in its current iteration, even though the bleed damage is in crazy strong tooltip, it can be cleansed and dodged. The synergy has to proc. Just a lot of things to have happen to make it work. So this is a heavy armor tank set. Glacial Guardian. I'm coming from Coral Airy. And let's see, armor, max stamina, health recovery. So the two through four piece is kind of meh. When you block an enemy within eight meters, you tether to them for eight seconds. When tethered, you deal 542 frost damage, and then it causes them 200% increased status effect chance, and it, the tether breaks. They've moved 12 meters away. It just really doesn't look like it provides much value. So we're going to go respec our attributes real quick. So if we respec our attributes, and since it scales off of max health, Let's dump in max health, see what our max health is. That's 39,000 max health. Now let's go ahead and look at the tooltip again. The frost damage just barely moved up. So the status effect is nice if you're trying to, you know, proc burning, poison, something like that. But I would not see a heavy armor tank using this. I mean, that's a gorgeous effect, but it hits you like an absolute noodle. And if you go out of the 12 meters, it breaks. <sighs> I just cannot see using this set in PvE or PvP. Like, what's the advantage? It, it provides very, very, very little utility. That effect looks gorgeous, though. <laughs> it looks... It, too bad the set is trash. Look at that. <laughs> The effect, they wasted such a beautiful effect on this. So this is the Monster Helm. I probably can't read it right. It looks extremely goofy. This is from the Coral Airy one. So the One Piece has 70, 731 magic and stamina, which seems quite odd considering that Swarm Mothers, what does Swarm Mothers get? Swarm Mothers gives us way more max stats for a One Piece, unless I'm missing something. It gives stamina and magicka, this gives magic and stam. So the One Piece right there strikes me as kind of odd. Basically, it uh, does a whirlwind, and um, the people inside the whirlwind have reduced cost of magic and stamina. and has a 20 second cooldown, and the uptime looks like 8 seconds. You can control the direction, okay? So you'd control the direction, apparently, the way you swing will shoot out forward. And then the resource typically isn't an issue. So yeah, a 10% resource sustain with 20 second cooldown, even if you can't control it, I would wish it would be more stationary, if anything. At least if it was stationary, I could use it in a dungeon where like, all right, we need a lot of juice. And plus the meta in PVE right now is to run Bahasis with low resource sustain. So everyone's doing a lot of damage. This actually goes counterintuitive to <laughs> what everyone's using right now, even in a ball group in PVP. You're moving much faster than this, right? So you, in a ball group, you're not, you're gonna move out of stuff pretty quickly. The AOE is massive and that's nice. Gorgeous looking set again, love the visuals, but that's just odd. The dot doesn't hit very hard at all. Another shock thing, people love the shock damage, I guess. And even I, even if I have decent high weapon or spell damage, just a very odd set. And the One Piece is really lackluster. Super disappointed in this set. I think this needs to get tuned significantly. Not a fan. Okay, so we got Storm Curse's Revenge. <laughs> Another shock set. 
Max magic, weapon damage, offensive pen. So maybe that's a like PvP they're trying to angle at an offensive pen set. And when you deal shock damage, you have a 15% chance to deal 2,000 shock damage to enemies and up to two other enemies within five meters. In order to use this 2,000 shock damage, I would need a gazillion shock damage. You know, the tooltip needs to be five or 6,000 AOE for this to actually be worthwhile running, right? Unless I'm missing something here. So the, the proc look is quite deceptive too. Well, I saw the shock there, okay. Storm Curse Revenge. It did, I don't know if this, oh, this takes into all the skeletons though. So let's do a single target now. I mean, 900, it's 900 DPS. Uh, you can't see the visual for some reason. So, I mean, it did hit. I mean, there's so many other proc sets out there that can just absolutely melt. So yeah, don't see this being a value, unfortunately, and you can't even really see it. This is the one that doesn't have a cool visual effect yet. So pass on that. And let's move on to Spriggan's Vigor. When you deal critical damage, you gain a stack of wild growth for five seconds and you restore 100 stamina. 10 stacks max. Each stack increases your max stamina. Okay, so this is a high crit chance one. So this, this set actually might be really good with Briar Heart for new players. So I have the stacks building. You can see in the bottom of my screen. So here's 10 stacks is the max, right? So I'm just doing stampede to build the stacks. Okay, now at 10 stacks, I have this nice green effect. And let me try to get my max stam up quick. So yeah, that does add a lot of max stam here. It's 100 stamina per crit though. So decent sustain. I think this would actually be a really good set to pair with Briarheart if you're running higher crit. It could add some good sustain. No, it's not Vicious Ophidian, but you're going to get some damage and sustain with it. So I don't think this is going to be end game, best in slot, um, but the Max Nam would scale very well with how the game works right now. And it's e really easy to keep the 10 stacks up, especially if you have Stampede, which is a guaranteed crit. So yeah, I'm actually liking this one. The Spriggan's one. Let's reread it again. So crit chance, two piece, max, and then weapon damage. You deal crit damage, you're going to stack a wild growth, five seconds. And something that's really important is it can happen every half second. So if you got three, four, five, six dots running at a time, and this procs, you're going to get those stacks up really quick. So it's kind of like Togvin's. This one's going to be mega here. When you block, you gain flowing water for 10 seconds, uh, causing your next bash attack. Deals magic damage up to six enemies, 10 meter line, applies major bone for 10 seconds, increasing their damage taken by 10%. This effect can occur every 15 seconds. So not 100% uptime, time, but we should have a trick with this one. Oh, that is good. Okay, so there's a couple of different components to this. So that looks like the, uh, what we say, infallible aether. So there's three kind of components. So I hold block first is one. John attacks me is two. Go ahead. Then I have the water on me. Then I have 10 seconds to bash whenever I want. It counts down. You can kind of see it in the middle of my screen. So then bash. That's a big AOE too. Love this set. Love this set. Now we can take it one step further. This makes any class kind of like Necro Colossus Nuke. Love it. In my opinion, this will be one of the top tier tank sets to get 100%. Love it. If we go over it, the two through four, good pieces. It's easy to proc. Visuals look amazing. It's going to apply both in PvE, PvP, Bash Necros. Definitely a PvE set though. Plus you can get that duration to be 100% uptime. Scales off your max health and does magic damage too. So overall, super impressed with this set. This set is going to be 1000 gazillion percent meta for tons of builds, specifically Dragonites, tanks, healers. If it comes out like this, this is the Nazari set. I think you had to say it. Max health one piece. When you use an ultimate ability close to six enemies within 12 meters, have all damage over time, major debuffs, minor debuffs applied to them extended for one second per 25 ultimate spec. So what, a 500 stack? That's 20 seconds, I think, roughly. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not good at math. That's why I'm a streamer. When I was doing pain with this, he was just putting the hurting on me. And when he, when he popped his ult, it was like God mode. Now, PvE, there's applications for this. PvP, there's just a limitless amount of things you can do. But let's just take an example of this by doing John quick. Here we go, one. Now look at the debuffs on him on the top of the screen. And then bang, a 500 stack. Look at those. <laughs> look at the top, 30 second, 27 second, 30 second. 
<laughs> yeah, so th those dots go up just dramatically. And not, I don't even have a poison running on it. I don't have a proc. There is going to be so many builds that run this dot setup. Now, that to be fair, though, that is a 500 stat. But look at that. Unless you can cleanse that, this dungeon set, this Monster Helm, PvE, PvP, day one, you have to get this set. No brainer. You got to start farming your Undaunted Keys today. Ma must have this set. Okay, so what we're testing real quick is, does this Monster Helm that we absolutely love, it's God tier, oh my God, Delta is freaking out about it. Does this Monster Helm extending debuffs and dot apply to Siege? After, so we're going to have to do the dot by firing a Fireball Sedge on. Then we're going to pop the ultimate and see what happens. Okay, and then ulti. Oh, it does apply to Siege. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, that needs to be fixed. <laughs> Let's summarize real quick. This set, PvE, PvP... It applies the siege? Man. Cold fires, me baggy as gaming, the ones you have to dig up that no one got time for except AD players. It's gonna be crazy powerful. There's new PvP item sets. So there's three rewards of the worthy set. One I was excited about when I read, Rallying Cry. So let's go ahead and check this out. While Battle Spirit is active, critically healing yourself or an ally, it's up to 12 people, up to 12 meters, gets 300 weapon and spell damage and 1650 crit resistance for 20 seconds. Each grip member affected reduced the weapon and spell damage by 15. So battle spirit means this is only going to work in PvP. So it's not going to work in overland or trials and so forth. So you see the developers can activate PvP only sets. This is one way to do it. So let's go ahead and test that out. It is 3200. Oh, that's gorgeous. You see that effect? Okay, so then, oh, that is gorgeous. Love this set. Okay, Rallying Cry. It has a crazy high uptime, so I can just basically reproc it. Yeah, you can get 100% uptime. So a small two, three player group, massive area, and it's 12 meters. Perfect for two, three, four people running around. It's like a, it's like a really powerful powerful assault for pv peers so it'd be good solo it'd be great small player group love this set okay um so real quick we're doing q and sunder so when you deal damage with the heavy attack gain 1236 offensive penetration for each enemy within eight meters of your target for 10 seconds and it can occur every seven seconds this essentially is a pvp set from rewards of the worthy how you earn it is just by getting ap by doing battlegrounds or seerdale and so forth and they're targeting obviously pvpers that don't want to run a proc set so this is a good way to break up a big ball group if you don't want to run a proc set or you can pair it with the proc set you'll notice when it says when you deal heavy attacks you'll notice probably a lot of the new sets are saying when you heavy attack it does not say fully charge heavy attack why that's relevant is a lot of people don't know the difference there's basically three ways to do an attack in the elder scrolls online a light attack a fully charge, you hold it down completely right. That's an obvious one. But there is actually a medium weave. So we'll do... See, that's a medium weave. The effect looks amazing. Look at that massive area. So hitting one enemy with this, this is not impressive, right? You can use another five piece to get way more penetration like stones, spriggans, something like that. But if you hit a gazillion people, you're going to get a lot. So let's go over here. So now we're going to do just a gazillion of these guys and medium weave. Now it hits all of them 1,700. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, obviously that hit a gazillion of them, but this thing ramps up. Another uh, bonus of this set is it has 100% uptime, or it could have 100% uptime assuming you have a target because it has a 10% uptime and it can occur every seven seconds. So doing a little bit more medium weaves is going to really strip the armor. You're going to get really good value from this set with three or more targets. The fact that the AoE is 8 meters is pretty juicy. Some people probably still run stuns and so forth, but if you can hit a massive amount of people, this will allow you to free up a monster helm and not run Balorgs. So yeah, good set I'm thinking. So the 2 through 4, healing max health armor. When you deal direct damage, you have a 10% chance to create an area under the target. Detonates after 1 second, applying this aura for 10 seconds. So what this aura is going to do is reduce health recovery, magic recovery, stamina recovery for each player hit. Meaning it can do a lot of recovery damage or a lot of recovery lowering. 
Oh my god, what a gorgeous effect. That has to be one of the most gorgeous effect vibe piece I've ever seen in this game. That that's incredible. I mean, but too bad it doesn't do much. Yeah, it procs off direct damage. It doesn't last super long. Um, 10% chance is a bit low. It does nuke recovery. So my next question is, can the effect of nuking your recovery be cleansed? Because it looks like it's a debuff, right? See, so direct damage. Should proc from light. There we go. Okay. So I see a debuff on you. Go ahead. Yep, you can cleanse it. Yeah, okay, so that's that makes it a huge no-go. Would you be able to dodge it? Because it has a one-second chance cast. Let's see if we can dodge it, okay? Now. Okay, let's try me blocking. There we go. Okay, but yeah, it can be cleansed, though. That's the huge downside of this. I don't see this being really effective, I think. There's many other... Uh, group utility sets and debuff sets and bomb sets to run over this. I couldn't see using this over one of the new uh, group utility sets, powerful assault, something to amplify damage because ball groups are just going to cleanse it anyway. Now we're done with all the rewards of the worthy set. So now we're on to the monster helms from Imperial City. So these ones I'm curious in. I've heard people say that they're like busted and broken and like, crazy powerful and stuff, but I haven't checked these out yet. Oh, this is the goofy one. Yeah, so this is a frost one. One piece is armor. On dealing frost damage, create a frozen area under target. Six seconds. Stand and it takes frost damage. Again, a stack of chilling bite. Five the snare. Four seconds. Four stacks. The enemy is mobilized. Major brittle for four seconds. So you take a bunch more crit damage. This, this, this tool tip is like reading Moby Dick. We got to just go see what this does. Oh, that snare got you. <laughs> okay, that does a lot. Oh my god. Okay, now I see it. Visually, another one that's absolutely gorgeous. So basically, it's a troll snare set. It deals a massive um, area frost damage and starts slowing you down. Then at four stacks, you get major brittle. Okay, so this might actually be pretty good. Oh, they're saying you can roll out of it. Okay, so let's try to roll out of it. Let's try to roll out of it. Let's try to do race against time. This time we're going to lay it down and then you're going to walk out of or attempt to first and then we'll go from there. Oh, it's gorgeous. See, then you become immobilized. Yeah. See, it's a big, nice snare that will immobilize you eventually and then proc that major brittle, making increased crit damage. That's a bomb set, dude. You're going to... I mean, this is for ball groups because they're going to have someone dedicated to having this and they come in with their proxy dead Shadow Mundestone Nightblades with 100% guaranteed crit. That's just going to melt people. So now let's use Race Against Time. Ready? Yep. Dark Convergence Macro with this. Okay, so you can't avoid it. So most players will get it, but... If I had a, if I had my my mag crow and I use this, I wouldn't want to slot battle orgs. But if someone else ran this for me, this is going to be a hell of a bomb set. Yeah, this set's actually pretty good. Um, now that I understand how it works, I think this is going to be a really solid PvP set. You could have a hero run it, a solo person run it, a small man run it. But the major crit, the major brittle, will really make a difference when bombing groups. Plus, the snare is amazing. It procs off a of frost damage, which I know I made fun of. Now I'm trying to eat my words here. That's that's number one. Really, really good. So this is the Lady Malgola set. This is from Imperial City. One piece offensive penetration. Okay. And then when you deal direct damage to a target within 12 meters, create an area that after one second that quickly moves and then returns dealing shock damage, of course, and applying inviration for five seconds. So it deals shock damage and causes the target to deal less crit damage. Okay. 4,500 proc on the tooltip. And it scales off of your highest offensive stat. Oh, God. Oh, it goes back, too. Okay, and then applies the debuff. So it goes back and forth when you deal damage to a target 12 meters, create an area, moves quickly, and then returns. So it goes back and forth. So it has pretty high damage, and it does a debuff. The debuff can be cleansed, too. The debuff for less critical damage. I don't know how this, how y'all are thinking about this set. I've heard people say this is going to be really good, but I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. I don't see this set being game changer, really. 
one piece is nice but you already have something that does all that and maybe i just don't have enough high weapon damage for it to scale and do a lot of shock damage or so maybe a store sork using it could get really amplify the shock damage with high weapon damage but i just don't this isn't screaming to me dark convergence okay that one's done now this is the one the scamp one that i'm really curious people said this one's crazy okay baron thrisk so the one piece that matches magma incarnate that's interesting on dealing area direct damage mark a target for six seconds every two seconds after explodes a scam nearby one second deal image damage up to four meters up to six enemies within four meters and then apply minor timothy <laughs> for 10 seconds draining the ult each explosive scamp deals 100 percent increased damage okay and it scales off a of weapon and spell damage but 25 second cooldown so what in the heck does this really do it says area um direct damage so i'm thinking templar or breath oh there it is okay hits you once Okay, that hits pretty hard though. And you, what are you at? 20,000? So it was draining your ultimate every time those scams spawn. Okay, let's do it on a big AoE here. So. There it is, bunch and prop. So it pops three times. So with the gazillion people around, Stampede did 70,000 DPS off of one cast. This did 6,000 in context. This does not just seem to be pretty impressive. It deals magic damage. I mean, the ultimate drain, minor timidity for 10 seconds draining one ultimate every half second. <laughs> so one ultimate every half second. It's not 10 ultimate every second. You know what I'm saying? So that hits you, it drains. It's gonna drain a total of like five ultimate or something. I've heard people ran rave about this one, but unless I'm missing something, I'm going to pass on this one. I think there's way more options. I think we tested all the sets to recap. The sets and Shipwright Regret were 100% worth collecting. So there's going to be some really good ones that might need to be tweaked here and there. Some really good ones from Rewards of the Worthy. Support sets, offensive penetration sets. Maybe um, that new Monster Helm is going to be crazy good. And then the Monster Helms in Imperial City, some are really hit and miss. I'm hoping that a lot of these don't get abused by the ball groups, just like Dark Convergence did. But I think that ice one really, really might. So hopefully I'm wrong about that. Well, gang, that's the video. What did you think about these item sets? Some meh, some amazing, some that might need a nerfing. I hope you got something out of this video. Make sure to click that like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and go check me out on twitch.tv slash Gaming for more. Thanks for watching.